Chapter 30 As the sun rose over the eastern mountains, Imogen and Cookie were backing out of the drive, Joe framed in the cabin doorway, waving goodbye in her robe and slippers, her long white hair falling over her shoulder. Cookie barked, ready for an adventure, but Imogen couldn't bring herself to smile. Despite being excited to go home and see her friends, maybe enjoy some happy hours at the local winery, she couldn't help but be sad to leave. In a short time, Vermont had become so special to her. She didn't know when or if she'd ever be back, but as she drove down Route 7, she absorbed the last of the fall colors, cutting through the back roads to get one last hit of the beautiful landscape in small towns. Cookie settled in quickly, seat belted into her back seat, and quite happy to go anywhere at all. When she passed the Welcome to New York sign, she might have finally allowed a small tear to fall. By the time she wound her way through into the small town of Hoosick, just over the border from southwestern Vermont, she was sobbing. She had to pull over into a parking lot, tears blinding her and making it impossible to continue safely. She was not a crier. She might have a hot temper, she'd admit that readily, but crying was something reserved for sad movies with lost dogs and ASPCA commercials. More, it was something she saved for the shower. She didn't think she'd cried publicly since she was a toddler. It was slightly embarrassing to be sitting in the parking lot of some little roadside store in a country town, bawling like she'd lost everything. Her time up here was always supposed to be temporary, so why did it feel like her heart was breaking? Finally, her tears subsided. She'd made her decision. When she wiped her eyes and looked up, she almost blew snot out of her nose. Almost because directly in front of her was a sign that read, Break for Moose, it could save your life, and a giant array of statues including a gorilla, a totem pole, and yes, there it was, a moose. Imogen started laughing. She laughed so hard the tears came again, and Cookie struggled to stretch the seatbelt so she could lick her face, but failed. She started to whine and bark. They were a mess, but Imogen couldn't help it. She wasn't one to look for signs from the universe, but here was an actual sign staring her directly in the face. Why was she fighting it so badly? Did she really have that much back in New Jersey? Sure, her parents were there, but the only time she talked to her mom was when she wanted something. And her dad? Well, her dad could visit. New Jersey was less than five hours' drive. As for her friends, well, if she was going to admit it, they were all getting married, having kids, and not hanging out nearly as much as they had previously. What was she really going back for? Here, there was her aunt, Harper and Bailey, Laura, Fortune, and... Gabe. Was she sabotaging herself by leaving? For the first time, she wondered what would happen if she stayed. Imogen turned to Cookie. Girlfriend, change of plans. I'm running into this store and I'll be right back, okay? Cookie barked once in agreement. Unhooking her seatbelt and blowing her nose one last time, Imogen walked into the Big Moose Deli. So Gabe just drove her home and let her leave? Harper asked, waving around the box of wine in her hand. Imogen walked into the general store to overhear her and Bailey gossiping. The bell over the door was missing, so somehow they hadn't realized she was there. She would have been annoyed, but it was fair. She had left without even saying goodbye to them. Not her finest moment. Bailey muttered something that sounded like, Yeah, what a dummy, which made Imogen smile crookedly. Harper by far had a louder voice, and she heard her distinctly. He would never admit how he feels about her knowing she was leaving. He's too selfless. Even when it comes to bite him in the butt, maybe she would have stayed. This time, she did hear Bailey. Yeah, but he'd always wonder if she stayed because of him and would regret it later. Ugh, he's so noble like that. I just want to smack him over the head. Bailey laughed, but then quickly sobered. Gabe will recover eventually. I'm more concerned with Fortune. The horse's name had Imogen finally interrupting. What's wrong with Fortune? Harper sniffed. I should be mad at you for leaving without saying goodbye but her small smile and quick hug told Imogen that she wasn't serious. Imogen was relieved. 
I'm the worst. Is it any consolation that I'm back? Back? Like, back? Bailey queried, one eyebrow raised. When Imogen just shrugged, Harper squealed, but Bailey wasn't letting it go so easily. Seriously, Imogen, if you are staying, you need to be sure. There are a lot of people you'll disappoint if this isn't what you really want. I know what I want, Imogen grinned. In fact, for the first time ever, I am sure about what I want and how I want to get there. Well, I'm glad to hear that, but unfortunately I'm not sure you can have everything you want. Imogen looked at Bailey. Why, what do you mean? Is this something to do with what you were saying about fortune? Actually, yes, Bailey responded. I hate to put a damper on this party, but fortune's gone. All the blood rushed out of Imogen's head, and she had to grip the counter to remain standing. She gritted out. What do you mean, gone? Bailey nodded sadly. Bianca finally realized they weren't the right fit. She wanted to sell him, but Laura, knowing his unpredictability, didn't think that was a good idea. I think she had it in her head she'd offer him to you, but once you left... To me? Imogen was incredulous. There was no way she could offer a performance horse of his caliber, much less than the monthly board where she lived. It would never have worked. But the thought of him going to some stranger, who didn't know or appreciate him, and continuing to be unhappy made her stomach churn. Yes, Bailey continued with the hits. Laura convinced her to send him to the local rescue to be adopted out. It was better than risking auction and having him end up on a meat truck to Canada. Now, Imogen really did want to vomit. She was horrified. She'd just seen him yesterday. He protected her on the trails, and she hadn't even said goodbye. What kind of person did that make her? Not one she was proud of. Do you know what rescue he's at? Bailey nodded. Okay. Imogen said decisively. I know what I have to do, but I need to talk to my aunt first. I could use some moral support. Are you ladies with me? Harper squealed and, embracing her two friends, began to jump up and down. Imogen guessed that was a yes. Now she just had to get things in order. <laughs>